okay, see how much more consistent that started flowing in once the part was heated up? So if you don't preheat thick parts like this enough, you get, you know, it's harder to keep a regular looking weld. I screwed up the torch angle at the end though, because I was I'm, when I was doing the arc shot, I'm welding behind a camera around it. So I didn't have room to get the torch just the way I wanted. See how it's, I had it pointed too low, whereas the torch angle back here was correct. You know, I was pointing in like a 45 about to get it up on the, the higher spot more so it didn't all flow down to the bottom and heat out here so wide. But regardless, that's a pretty good demonstration of why you want to preheat your thicker parts. Try to get you better camera angles here. See how you kind of have more irregularities. The puddle's shaking around more violently and just not quite as smooth, where that's starting to wet in really nice at the end. Okay, this video was for a website subscriber that was welding some parts up, you know, thick to thinner. This is one inch, that's quarter. He was welding, I think, five eighths to quarter. But, and then he was wondering, he was having problems with the tungsten holding its shape on his Prime Weld 325, which is exactly what I just welded this with. And then, you know, he emailed me, and so I'm going to email him back with all the welder settings I'd recommend. And then everything's explained on my website, how I, how I do it, you know, how I feed rod and all that. So if you're interested, the website's only 45 bucks. I guess if I'm trying to advertise a website showing you that I know what I'm doing, I better do it as good as I can on the other side of the camera out of the way, right? So there's a few things that didn't go quite as planned, and I think it's best for me to just to have full transparency and show you guys, you know, not act like I'm Mr. Perfect and know what I'm doing all the time because everybody makes mistakes. So on this last weld I did, you can see right here at the end, it's all black and sooty. And so the reason that happened, because I wasn't paying attention, I was, you know, just thinking about getting good camera angles and stuff. I tack welded it with my, I tack welded it at too steep of an angle. I should have came over here and came in like this to get shielding gas coverage around the corner too. I think I came in like this and tacked it on the back side, you know, so there was some air, not just pure argon shield in it. So that's why that's got black spots on it. And then I should have been more patient with it at the first and had it heat up more. And then, like I said, that torch angle's wrong, so it's way too low on the bottom. You want the thickness of the weld up on both sides equally. So yeah, hopefully you learned something. Thanks for watching. That one turned out pretty good though. And did you notice how slow I was going? For me, at least, you know, I'm used to doing thinner parts, like typically eighth to three eighths thick. This stuff, I have to really be mindful to go slower and be patient with it. Because if you rush it, 
the big this you know how big this puddle is you kind of it starts getting at least for me it gets kind of wonky and out of out of whack but I was going really slow with that and just being patient with it this side's still a little bit shinier and prettier though um, you know so probably this side I could have preheated the part even more with a torch and got it you know a lot hotter so this would wet in and stay shiny so you're getting those that little bit of white frosting on each bead still looks pretty good though and if you're having problems with any of your welds and your website subscriber when you email me to save us both time take a picture of your weld the problem you're having take a picture of your torch show that exactly to me you know and show the exactly what the tungsten looks like how you shaped it and all of your welder settings and this weld here like i said was done with the prime weld 325 i'm really happy with this machine so far and if you follow the link through my website and use the code 6061 it'll save you a few bucks and help me out to help me keep making these videos and then i use the tig button variable amperage controller that i sell on my website this replaces a foot pedal it does the exact same thing as a foot pedal you want more heat just push a little bit harder you want less heat just ramp off the great thing about this versus other hand amperage controllers is you can slide it comfortably wherever you want. Like this part, you know, I was I had this set at 325. I have no idea how much amperage I was using. I don't really care. I was probably back off, you know, back off of that about 300 or so. It was getting really hot, you know, and you don't want to be choked. On thick stuff like that, you don't want to be choked way up unless you have big gloves on. You'll cook your gloves and get real hot. So that slides way back wherever that wherever you want it. I'd also like some feedback if you guys don't mind in the comments. Let me know. I'm I'm an I feel like I'm a really awkward public speaker. That's why for the first, you know, five years I didn't even talk in my videos at all. I feel like I stutter on my words, like my brain's working faster than what I can speak. But I don't wanna I don't wanna script everything because then it just sounds fake. So let me know, you know, if it sounds like I'm kind of stumbling through my words and should script it better or just talk like I, in real life how I normally would.